What is up? Thank you, JK Q&A. This is volume three, Wildstar Edition, part three. Um, so, quick recap, if, you're, if you've been hanging with me this long, um, I put out the question on Twitter, hey, ask me your favorite Wildstar inquiries, and um, I'll do my best to answer them about the music, at least. Um, and then uh, I got a bunch of responses, so I'm trying to go through them as fast as possible, but I'm also trying to give you some information, hopefully that you find exciting or um, just interesting. Um, all right, so we're going to move on here, and um, here we go. Trout. Trout says, it's a great name already, I like it, Trout Ambush. <laughs> it's, a good, it's so good, I don't know why it makes me laugh. Okay. Trout Ambush says, more of a statement, but you have a gift that is too good to be confined to just one game, and more games need to have your composition. Trout, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I would agree that I would not want to be confined to just one game, and that more games need to have me as a composer. I would agree with that. Um, I think that's my goal here in life, is to do more things. Um so, uh, yeah, that's what hopefully is the, the end game here. Hopefully we get on some more things and, and I'm able to work on some cool stuff. Um, and if you hear of anything, you can just send send people my way. Or if you know of anyone that needs music, uh, let me know. Because I would love to work on more things. But, um, you know, it's uh, sometimes it's just a tough egg to crack. You can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. I don't know. That's not even doesn't even apply here doesn't even apply. I just, I heard it on Batman, the original one with Michael Keaton. Joker says it. Thought it was cool. Didn't fit here though. Moving on. Cat. So a cat IRL says, what's your process for figuring out what sort of sound you want to give a track? Did Carbine give you screenshots, concept art, or let you walk through the zone? Um, yes. So this is a great question. And, um, I, I've talked about it many moons ago, um, but uh, one of the biggest inspirations for me composing the music to Wildstar was the art. And so, I mean, I think we all agree the art is pretty amazing. Um, so getting early looks at the environment and how that looks and feels um, by being able to play it around in a zone um, before there was really any content to do there, but just getting a look at the trees or the mountains or the grass, or maybe it was just desert, whatever it was. Um, it was really cool to get a sense of what the environment art was like. Um, and then talking, to, going down the hall and talking to the design guys and saying, hey, well, what, what's the player going to be expected to do? Is it dangerous? Is it more fun? Is it um, relaxing? And almost every time I was working in a zone, I would be writing um, the music on one monitor on one computer and I would have the zone up on the other computer and I would just write and just sort of look. My test, I guess, was to be write some music, you know, maybe I just kind of played on piano as like a sketch or just like a, a string pad as a sketch and just try to get the mood right and then I would sort of record it and play that back and as I'm listening back to it, I just sort of walk around the zone and I would just ask myself, do I believe this? Do I believe that I'm in this zone? Do I believe that what I'm hearing is congruent with what I'm seeing? And that was sort of my test. I would always try to be inspired by the art and be in walking around, um, write some music, and then come back and test it out and put it through a little test and go, do I believe this? And um, that's kind of was my process for writing um, through the different zones. Okay, Eromu. I hope I said that right. Eromu? 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 I'd watch a 30-minute video of you just talking about each song. This, To be honest, these videos are pretty close to that, but I appreciate that. Uh, what sparked the genius that became the Dominion Exile themes? Um, well, genius is a strong word, but I do appreciate it. Hashtag bring back Wildstar. Uh, love it. So, the Dominion and Exile themes. I don't even remember which came first, to be honest with you. I have a notebook. Hold on. Okay, here they are. Two notebooks. Um, all right, I want, now I'm curious. I just want to see what came first. Chicken or the egg. Um, but also, guess what I found? A little bit of uh, Wild Star trivia for you. So this is, I still remember the night. It was about midnight. I was sitting on my couch 
with my laptop and a little little one octave MIDI controller and I was just messing around and this was, I don't know if you can see this, hopefully you can this is the Levy and Bay, it says Levy and Bay and this is my idea of Levy and Bay and I wrote it out here with the little changes over the top, the chord changes, but here's the melody Levy and Bay, I thought it'd be cool to go bum I thought that'd be good for Levy and Bay. Turns out, uh, the more I worked on it, it was like, oh, that actually is a really strong main theme. So uh, my idea originally for Levy and Bay uh, became uh, the Wild Star main theme, and then I wrote something else for Levy and Bay. So. Um, Here's why I think that happened. There was I put so much pressure on myself to write a main theme. It was just like I couldn't come up with anything good. So I had the main theme in the back of my head, like I need to get this done, I need to get this done, but nothing was really coming out that I thought was very worthy of being called the main theme. So here I was working on Levy and Bay, and I really wanted a sense of adventure and a sense of, you know, just exploration and unknown and excitement for Levy and Bay. And I wrote those things and it ended up being uh, the main theme. So when I just didn't struggle to, to try and make something the main theme, it kind of popped out, which was cool. All right, moving on. Exile theme or Dominion theme. So this is my, all my sketches for, um, here's the Northern Wilds sketch. Um, okay, so the Exiles came first, actually came very early on. It was actually before they were even called the Exiles, they were called the Defiance. Um, I don't know if that's top secret. I doubt it is. Who cares, right? The company doesn't exist. Here we go. I don't know if you can see right there. Uh, it says the Defiance theme. So the Exiles, before they were Exiles, and before Wildstar was Wildstar, they were called the Defiance. And uh, so I don't know if you can hear that piano, but so that was what I sketched out initially, was over this B minor. Um, so real quick, just to give you a little glimpse into that theme, um, early on, like the heart of the group didn't change, the name changed, but even when they were the Defiance or the Exiles, it didn't matter. They were a group that were looking for their home. They were looking for a place to rebuild and to fit in. And so um, I knew that I wanted to start this theme on a note that was not in the chord. I wanted it to sort of start outside the chord and able to fit to sort of move towards fitting in. You start on a B minor chord, which is B minor is B, D, F sharp, but the melody starts on an E, so the melody starts outside the chord and then works its way in. And then in the third bar, we have another dissonance with a, it's kind of a little more beautiful or hopeful dissonance with a major seventh, a G chord, and I'm playing an F sharp. So you can hear that. Here's the E, right, outside the chord, B minor. So you can hear that move, and then Right here. It's just it's it's a little a little dissonant at the F sharp, but it it creates a little a little warmth also and a little a little hope. So anyway, um, that's the defiance theme, um, uh, the exile theme, uh, and that came first. And then the Dominion theme, man, the Dominion theme was tough. That was a hard one to write um, <clears throat> because they kept saying they wanted to feel. I kept getting the direction that people wanted it to feel like, like the Imperial March. Actually, <laughs> this is what they what they kept telling me. And so to to try and write something that was um, that felt like the Imperial March, um, but wasn't the Imperial March. I mean, that's that's a tall it's a tall order to fill. It's like saying to someone, "Paint me a Picasso, but don't make it look exactly like a Picasso." So you have to boil down what's the essence of. <clears throat> What makes the Imperial March great? And what, you know, it's just driving rhythms. So when it came to the Dominion theme, I knew I wanted to have that. And it's just sort of this incessant rhythm, this two bar rhythm um, that just keeps going and it's kind of, it's not 
it's not super simple. It's kind of a complex rhythm, and it's got some triplet in there that make, kind of throws you off a little bit, and it's got these 30-second notes. But um, it just makes you sort of sit up a little tall and go, oh, these guys mean business, right? There's something precise, and there's something sort of systematic about um, that rhythm and how it just keeps going over it and over and stomping on you. And then the Imperial March has a similar thing, and then the Imperial March has these beautiful, big, intense brass moments, and that's kind of what we tried to do with um, the Dominion as well. So it took a few tries to get there, um, and eventually I kind of feel like I found, I found something that worked. Okay, Dylan Washburn says, when making the music for Wildstar, have you ever had to dial back the tracks to be less distracting to gameplay? Especially once the in-combat layer turns on, that could easily have distracted me, but luckily it usually got me hyped. Uh, so, yes, uh, there's a couple times when when writing um, the tracks. I remember once we got it in the game, it was just like you know what this is. This is just too much, um, and, you know, for walking around. Um, Daradune was kind of that way. Um, it kind of wanted it to be. I, I was trying to be a little more aggressive, but it really had to be a little bit more like prowling in a way, right? You're in this tall grass and you're hunting and. And so I had to dial that back. And I did get some feedback from players that said they still felt it was too aggressive for what you're doing in the zone. Um, and that's a fair argument. Uh, but yeah, I think in the in-combat layer turns on, again, I, you know, previously I just, I talked about the, the combat layer system. I, I had a hard time with it. I never really was what I wanted it to be. And I don't know. I don't know where I, 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 I don't know how I feel about in-game combat layers turning on. I feel like it can be really engaging and, and awesome, and I feel like it can be also kind of cheese ball at the same time. So um, I think it's how well it's implemented and what the gameplay is going on at the time is and how it propels it forward. So I think we could have done that better, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Okay, Bad Ideas with Backy says, Hey Jeff, hey! Uh, I've been sorting sound files from Wildstar and there's a lot of music that never made it into an OST. Fact. Having to name these, I was wondering about song titles. Do you start with one in mind? Think of it after all these odd music files have a title. Okay, <clears throat> not everything has a title. Um, the only things I really gave titles to were the things that I had to go record with people. An orchestra or a soloist or something like that, a choir. Um, because I didn't want to just show up and... Um, well, quick, real quick, the first recording session I ever did was Alg Rock and Northern Wilds, and I did, I did have just generic titles that said Northern Wilds Ambient Music 1, Alg Rock, main theme, whatever, things like that. Um, and what I found is I spent so much time explaining to the orchestra and showing them pictures and kind of... Okay, uh, so let's, I would say I'd be up there in front of the orchestra and I'd say, okay, uh, let's pull up the next track, you know, the next... Uh, piece. Look at look at your music here. Here's what we really want to do. We want it to be um, kind of the sense of adventure, but it's also a little foreboding. So uh, really lay lay into some of these heavier low notes, um, and I would kind of like describe the mood and tone. And I was wasting. I felt like I was wasting time conveying the emotional context. So what I decided to do from then on is give everything a name that conveyed that emotional context for me. So. It wasn't always easy. It was really a challenge, actually, to come up with with names that I felt could succinctly state. If you look at that piece of music, you go, I kind of have an idea how that might sound. Not always, but for the most part. Um, let me just run through some titles here and see how well, let's see how well I did. The main theme, I didn't do a main theme title. I probably should have. The Exile main theme, when we hear it in, its, in all its glory, which is later in the game, um, it's called The Resolve of Heroes. So... If you were part of the orchestra and I said, all right, we're going to uh, move on to the next piece of music. It's called The Resolve of Heroes. You probably know what you're going to get. You're going to get something that is um, that is the good guy theme. It's, it's, it's heroic and adventurous, and it's, it has a bold statement. Um, and if I said, all right, we're going to pull up the next cue. It's called The Heartbeat of Evil. I think you know what you're going to get, right? You, your heartbeat of evil, you're going to get dark and just saturated with, with dissonance. Um, and once, if I said, hey, we're going to do the Savage Wilderness, probably some ethnic-y sort of blend of, of percussion with um, some dark tones and some maybe intense rhythms. Um, you know, two pistols and an open frontier. I think you know, 
Oh, it sounds like a Western. So again, my goal was to try and name some of these things um, and give them names that could help convey the emotional context to the orchestra and save me some time uh, on the orchestra stage. And when you're when you're turning through money by the hour to pay these people and to pay the facilities, uh, every minute counts. Um, so I think that was a good call. But there's a ton of music that just does not have titles, and for that I apologize. Um, okay, moving on. Ms. Raven needs more Quinlan Voss. Awesome, that's a long name. I don't know if I pronounced all that right. Miss Raven needs more Quinlan Voss. I think I did. She says, I'm interested in the overall process. Following David Collins and his podcast, I've learned tons about movie scores, and I wonder what the process is like for video games. Um, so, you know, it's different than film. Film, I just did my first feature-length film a couple months ago, and it's a documentary called The Girl Who Wore Freedom. And I... It was interesting how different that was from my video game experience, right? Video games are non-linear, so you have to sort of be open to however the gameplay is going to go, and you can't... You have to be very creative if you want to foreshadow something or if you want to build into something. Um, Wildstar was tough in that in that sense because we, were, we, we may want to try to channel and funnel the player towards a boss fight, and so maybe the music gets more intense as you arrive towards the arena, wherever you're going to fight. But the reality is you could turn around and walk away and go do something else. And so we had to accommodate for that. And, and so the nonlinear aspect of game music, um, it's fun and it's a fun puzzle to solve, but it's a different challenge. And with film music, it's much more linear. You can be much more deliberate with um, what you want to say or what you don't want to say, what you want to withhold um, from the emotional aspect of, of your music. So... Um, I think there's a, a definitely a difference there. There are some similarities um, with, you know, you want to support what's happening on the screen, whether it's a cinematic in the game or whether it's um, exploring a field of flowers. You want to support that so that there is a connection between what the what the person is experiencing in the screen and what they're hearing in their ears. There needs to be a connection there, and I think that goes with television, film, games, commercials, you know, anything that we experience with our senses of, of sight and sound, I think we need to, um, there has to be that connection. Because we all notice when there's a disconnect, right? We notice when something is not good or it, it just sort of goes bad. Um, okay, Flix says, awesome idea, Jeff. Thanks, Flix. Did you start working with the complete Wildstar main theme first or did, did you compose tiny snippets and finish them later in the process? Would love to hear how you start composing after the briefing um okay so yes yeah. uh and no i think as we just talked about let me see if i find this again so the wildstar main theme started as the levy and bay theme so i started as the levy and bay theme i was super excited about getting levy and bay done it turns out that will felt really strong as the main theme, and I'm glad we made that call. Charlie Lanus, the audio director at the time, he he helped me sort of make that transition. Go, I, I, I think this is a really strong main theme, so we should work on that. So um, so I had the melody down um, and the opening idea, and then um, it started to, the arrangement kind of evolved from there. Um, then there was a whole middle section, which I, I didn't write when I was writing Levy and Bay. Uh, I wrote that later when I was thinking, okay, this is the main theme, and then there's, you know, just some different sections I had to add to um, to make it longer and more grand. So uh, it kind of came in chunks, I guess, in a way, because I knew I wanted to develop it, but I had the theme, and then I had this, that was one snippet, but then I had to do something with it, and that was like the next snippet, and then I had to go somewhere else, and that was another snippet. So uh, it was, initially there was this, like, idea burst, but then it became much more, like, surgery. I really had to dig into this idea and, and really extract what I could from it. Mining maybe is better than surgery. I wasn't repairing it. I was I was mining for gold. All right. Last question on this video and we'll do another one. All right. Chimer says, I have so many questions that I can't fit into one tweet, I think. Oh, well, that's good that you have a lot of questions. Um, I'd be surprised if I could fit them all in one video. So that's why I had to break it up. So I understand where you're coming from. The first would be if it was possible that you had any of the music sheets for any of the instruments laying around all the tracks. I wanted to make a... Yes. 
Um, I don't have Reaching on piano, but I do have Drusera's theme on piano. Um, so I can make that available. I'll link it below and make Drusera's theme available. Um, and then if anyone plays cello, I have the cello music from Solemn Shadows, which is this beautiful solo cello piece. And I can also link that below. You can play it on piano too, but it was written for cello. Uh, it's just one, one bass clef line. Um, so I'll link those below and you can, you can, um, you guys can have those. I don't have a reaching one, but, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll make one. So, all right, that's it for now. Uh, man, we, I'm having so much fun with these. This is more parts of the series than I thought, but, uh, thanks for sticking with it and we'll talk to you guys soon. I can use the darkness and the dissonance, but the melody is very methodical, very calculating. And so I opened with just that. All right, and it's just sort of that repeating tone of E flat again and again. I start on the E flat minor. And then I knew I could start getting a little bit out there when I went to C minor but introduced a B natural in the melody. And you get this minor chord, a C minor chord, but the melody has a B in it, so it's a minor chord with a major seventh. Just a cool sound.